Our next speaker is, uh, has joined us uh, from uh, the University of Architecture, Jan Minku, uh, is a Professor Doctor of Architecture, Ms. Ana Maria Dobija, and she will be speaking uh, regarding some uh, uh, technologies and carrying forward our uh, discussion on, on uh, environmental design. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for inviting me here, actually. My presentation is called Construction and Reconstruction. Uh, of the sustainable roof systems because I had in mind also not only the new buildings but also the retrofitting of the building, the reconstruction of the building in order to uh, respond to the uh, requests of today's uh, let's say uh, architecture and environmental pressure more or less. I began with uh, let's say a quote of uh, the uh, Brundtland uh, report, Our Common Future, dated a long time ago, past century, past millennium, but still very uh, actual development that, means, uh, that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So it's dated 1986, which is over 20 years ago, and still we don't seem to have found actually one way or the best way to do it and in some respects haven't found any way. The concept of sustainable development aims to preserve and restore the environment as well as to ensure the health of the user. This is obviously a target that we all have accomplished by the design of the building as a whole and in details. In details meaning also in technology systems that are used to build uh, the respective uh, uh, buildings in order to achieve, I call it a cooperation between the national, uh, natural environment and the built environment so that the natural environment will not be aggressed by the building and on the other hand the building would be um, increased, the building performance should be increased by the environment. This again is a statement. There are some things however that we can do. If we take into account the type of the site the landscape, the orientation, and the traditional building technologies, because uh, as far as it might seem strange, in everywhere, in every country, um, the traditional building technologies, keep in mind that the building takes into account the type of the site, it takes into account, while being designed, the landscape and the orientation of the building. So, uh, very strangely, uh, all the uh, necessities of today have more or less an answer in principle actually, not in current materials or systems, but in principle of uh, uh, designing a building. They um, relate very much to the old traditional uh, technologies. On the level of building technologies, we have to use adequate materials, renewable, recyclable, durable, with reduce incorporated energy in order to achieve sustainable construction or sustainable reconstruction. There is a um, legend, more or less real, that these systems are very expensive. And uh, for some time I've been trying to explain that they are not necessarily very expensive and it takes somebody some courage to implement them maybe not the most expensive ones, but uh, we have to start somewhere and sometime. And I think it is time to start, and I think I know where we should start, for instance, on the roof. We have been doing a lot of uh, studying and uh, experiencing on the walls and windows. Maybe we should also uh, focus on the roof sometimes. The roof, a constructive assembly that closes the top of the building in order to protect against the environmental agents, obviously, but apart from this, main uh, function. Also, natural ventilation of the inner space can be achieved, also natural light can be achieved, also protection against fire, and very important in uh, what sustainable construction is uh, um, involved, hydrothermal protection, acoustic protection, natural ventilation, I said, and natural light. The others, protection against water, wind and fire being more or less um, normal for uh, any use to, uh, any roof to, to uh, accomplish. From the sustainable development and energy efficiency point of view, there are some systems that can be um, 
installed, which ensure some um, energy efficiency, which is connected to, to uh, the low costs, let's say, of such an intervention. Now, what we have here as an image, normally I'm telling uh, my students that this is not an elephant skin. It is a non-protected roof membrane of a building that I also know uh, that has been staying like this for some years. If it had been protected, and the most simple way of protecting it would have been to, to uh, cover it with um, um, light color uh, covering, actually. The um, theory, at least, says that uh, the energetic effort of reducing the cooling of the air is between 10 and 60 percent, which again would mean a lot of money that is saved by a very um, cost-effective, low-cost uh, means, just by the protection of the waterproof membrane. Of course, we're discussing about uh, bitumen-based waterproof membranes, and it's a bitumen-based one, the one I'm showing you. At an urban scale, the roof represents a system, the roof garden, a system for diminishing the pollution, for diminishing the quantity of carbon dioxide, reducing the heat islands, creating extra space for community activities. And it is not as expensive as it seems because there are some types of roof gardens, different types of roof gardens. Some of them are more expensive, of course, like this one. The roof gardens can be efficient systems for heating, cooling, cost reduction for the apartment beneath the roof, for sound attenuation, for reducing electromagnetic radiation, reducing the pressure that is uh, imposed uh, on the sewerage system by the water, by the rainwater. But I was saying a but. This is, again, a set of uh, expensive roof gardens. Waterproof protection is badly installed. For instance, like this one here, and we're not discussing about the waterproof, but only about its protection uh, on uh, sand, on some uh, uh, type of uh, uh, materials that uh, create a um, horizontal surface, but on sand, and the sand has not been uh, washed properly, the vegetation that is the seeds that are caught in the sand will start growing. And we will obtain such an image, which is not exactly a, a roof garden. It is a dangerous situation because this vegetation will also break the um, waterproof membrane that is beneath it. So if something like this will grow on a roof, when we don't want it to, then why don't we just plant something like this with intention? Of course, it implies two or three more layers that protect the um, um, waterproof membrane. What I'm telling you is not based on what we have researched. We haven't researched too much on this topic. We are trying now. But uh, based on uh, American and uh, Canadian um, researchers that demonstrate that about 50% of the cooling costs during the summertime or heating during the winter time that are necessary in the space below the roof system are reduced by the use of such green roofs, such echo roofs. The conclusions in those um, researches, and you have also the uh, sites where I have uh, um, found the um, research, are that throughout the spring and the summer period, the heat quantity that passes through the roof during the daytime is decreased 85%. And the quantity of, loose, uh, of lost heat during the night is decreased 70%. The difference of temperature in 24 hours was reduced in Canada from 46 degrees to 6 degrees, which meant uh, very, low, very much lower costs uh, in heating. The roof garden diminishes the vo water volume that is undertaken by the rainwater collectors of the roof, with again implication in the maintenance cost of the collectors and the sewage system. This is very important, it seems, in Germany. They seem to be very uh, attentive on the uh, costs uh, of the uh, collectors and the sewage system. And this is why they are very keen on diminishing the water volume that passes through the uh, um, collectors, the rainwater collectors and the sewage system. And also, the roof garden 
creates, can create a water reserve and combined with water tanks that are separately uh, installed, uh, creates a water reserve for the maintenance of the roof. You can irrigate the roof or the water supply for toilets, toilet flushing, car wash, um, that reduce again the, water, uh, the potable water consumption costs. The photovoltaic uh, panels, although they may seem and may be um, expensive while building the house, Eventually, they pay back because uh, the electricity that is produced <coughs> pays back for the initial investment. Um, more and more, it seems again that in uh, Europe, and not only in Europe, these modules are assembled, assembled on uh, rooftops, especially industrial in this case, but also on uh, um, people's houses, individual houses, or on institutions, providing a major contribution uh, of an, uh, electricity saving. And uh, just uh, a few figures uh, of uh, two years ago, three years ago, in Europe, the area of uh, roofs that have been provided with photovoltaic systems, Europe, uh, United States, or Japan, and the PV uh, ratio in electricity that um, has been brought to the, to the um, uh, system, to the electrical system of uh, the uh, countries. Again, I cannot uh, check it. I can only give you the, the, the um, um, percentage as I have also uh, read them.